you'll probably, I don't know how fast you can track, but it's going to go up. So you're going to see this little blue ball kind of up. Slew SPS chapter, and uh, this is our proof of theory railgun. Next semester we'll actually be making a hardcore railgun with the idea that we can actually hopefully break the sound barrier. But the first thing we want to do is make something just to prove the theory and show it to people that didn't take as much effort yet. Because uh, next semester will be kind of exclusive. But this is our uh, current idea. Alright, is that simply charged? System is charged. Uh, right. Do you want to get a view from behind here? Check that system needs to uh, get back to full charge. Alright. Give it a moment. No! We're not doing that again. Huh. Oh. Sorry for the late introduction. My name is Michael Trio, the SPS Vice President of Technological Affairs, as well as this project's cameraman and narrator. You'll hear more from me later. The projectile we'll be using for this is just a uh, paperclip that has its ends cut off. And we'll show you uh, another example afterwards that you may enjoy. Alright, you ready? System is charged. I'll go around this way. Alright, here it goes. Got a good angle? Alright, as you see, the projectile was launched slowly upwards and also forward, and it landed right here. If you want to measure. Uh, the video feedback. And this is our uh, one of our awesome. We're approximately 1.1 meters is our horizontal distance, which is pretty decent just for a proof of theory. Speaking of theory, let's take a look at how the railgun works. Here is the system itself. We have the capacitor bay's positive end connected to this rail, and the negative end connected to this one. Obviously, when building a gun. We care most about the force that will push the projectile. The equation to determine this is, and follow along with me, force equals current multiplied by the line integral of dr, where r is the position vector across the magnetic field. The current is primarily what creates the force, giving the force some of its magnitude and creating the magnetic field, which gives the rest. The line integral of dr cross b defines the direction of the force. The magnetic fields of the two rods circle around them. We determine the flow of the magnetic field by the right-hand rule for straight-line currents. The sum of the magnetic field lines show a net upward flow. The integration of the position vectors culminate the charge throughout the rails. By the right-hand rule, we know the resulting forces want to rip the rails apart with the force wanting to send this rail that way and the opposite rail the other. However, these rails are secured by powerful duct tape, so that the railgun won't blow up and kill all of us here. The projectile, however, is not secured to anything, so, again by the right hand rule, it will want to fly that way. The more current there is, the more the projectile wants to go that way. If we want to simplify the equation somewhat, we can say that since the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the plane of the current, only the field's magnitude matters, so long as we remember that it was traveling up to determine the direction of the force we're calculating. Also, since the two rails are secured, the only position vectors that matter are on the projectile, which can be integrated to simply the length between the rails, which we will write as L. F equals I L B. Simple, right? Well, for those who couldn't follow, we have the English emissary, Tom Doherty, to explain it in even more simplistic terms. Speedy thing goes in, boom, it goes fast. Well said, Tom. And now, Zach will go into further detail about the construction of our railgun. The railgun essentially consists of two dozen small capacitors salvaged from disposable cameras. They are wired in parallel 
in this daisy chain. Uh, they are charged by simply one of the board, one of the boards from a camera, uh, run by a standard laboratory power supply. The voltmeter you see in front of you is for measuring when the capacitors are fully charged. The uh, system is activated by pressing what would have been the camera button when your power supply safety is hooked up. And as you can see, the needle will rise, and you don't have to stare at it this long, but it will eventually get up to approximately 300 volts, and the board has a logic circuit that then cuts power to the system. Uh, at that point, it is ready for firing. Uh, the projectile you saw previously was a hunk of paper clip, a piece of solid wire. Uh, the projectile I'm about to make is a piece of aluminum foil that is relatively small and has a relatively low mass comparatively. And let me take a small triangle of aluminum foil, wrap it around a very small wire, in this case the lead to a resistor, And what you end up with is this small tube of aluminum foil, you know, about the size of a hypodermic needle. And uh, if you get your dimensions right, you can get it where it's just long enough to bridge the gap between the rails as such. And then I believe by the sound of the transformer that we are approaching our maximum voltage. And as you see on the voltmeter, or don't see on the voltmeter, that uh, we are approaching 300, 3 on the 100 scale. Any moment now, the board will cut out. Okay. All right, so this... We uh, unhook the safety, and we are now ready to fly. This projectile is a little bit different because it uh, is, has a lot less mass, so it'll fly a lot further. But you also notice something else. That's uh, pretty interesting. So we'll just launch and go ahead. The uh, projectile essentially vaporizes from the amount of energy. And you can still see the smoke everywhere. Maybe not in the video, but it's definitely around us. And part of the projectile vaporizes. And you notice the projectile has been launched all the way to here. Which if we were to measure, I'd estimate like 1.4 meters. Oh no, here we at 1.5 meters. And uh, slightly more dangerous due to the ionized aluminum going into the atmosphere, but uh, definitely a little bit more interesting. And that's all. Be sure to join us next year for our finished railgun.